What's going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hey, how you doing? I'm Chris and I'm building a business that suits my lifestyle. And I've been documenting this progress over the last 120 weeks and it's been an interesting journey. Now today's topic is when we change our mindset, we change our results. Whether you're a small business, reselling, eBay seller, whatever you wanna call it, it's all the same. And that sameness is this, we do business for purpose and for profit. <laughs> Basically, mostly because we want to make money, but that's okay. That's why we're doing it. Now, once you understand that and understand that this is why I'm doing it, this is the intent. And of course, having purpose, building something, being able to create something and call it your own or having a side hustle, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little flex. But if your focus is to make money, then why not have the mindset that enables us to do so? As I said before, this is week 120 of me actually starting this business and actually operating this business. And like a broken record, it's been a lot of ups and downs, roller coaster moments each week, each day, and each month. And I continue to learn and I continue to see some amazing results. And I also have to learn the hard way and realize I need to adapt or pivot and adjust. However, in theory, when we make progress, we should actually be making better progress as we take the learnings and apply them to the next iteration of our action in theory. So over the last 120 weeks, and I guess over the last few months more so, I've been seeing some more incredible results through the changing of my mindset and the approach of how I go about and do business. And now I want to be frank, this will continue to change. I will continue to adapt. I'll continue to pivot and find better ways of working and better ways to grow the business. Do I have the secrets that will help you make money quickly? No, but I do have the insights that has worked for me and they have paid off really, really well. So in this video, I wanna share with you some of my biggest mindset changes that has enabled me to grow. And you can see up on screen here what that progress has looked like over the last couple of years. And I also wanna share with you my month results of April being my best month yet once again, and also my weekly progress for week 120. And if you stick around to the end, I will show you some show and tell. Let's dive in. So we're gonna be talking about mindset changes that have enabled me or allowed me to actually grow. And number one is, make profit and the quicker the better now hear me out here right you got to understand this this is my mindset and again i want to be very very clear this is not financial advice and this is my opinion and this is what has been working for me and who knows i might continue to adapt and change this but this is what's been working for me so take what you want from it see if you can learn something from it or take what you can apply something from your own perspective and do it better Profit is what we want, we've established that, but to get it, we need to ensure that we have enough margin to cover our costs, you know, the costs to sell. We also need to make sure that we're covering our running overheads. As you continue to scale, those overheads potentially become increasingly more. And we also need to have the ability to continue to rinse and repeat the whole process of getting this profit and the ability to buy more stock. So when we're looking at profit, there's a few different aspects that we need to consider. Now, this might not be all of them, but there's a few points here that I believe are very important that we need to cover. These three points are this. Can we make profit quickly, like with a sell-through rate? Can we make a high margin profit and the volume of sales to make said profit? So the first one being, can we make a profit quickly with a sell-through rate? So there are times here when we should leverage the chance to make money quickly. And what I mean by this is, if you can get $5 less, $10 less, you might be able to still maintain a pretty good margin and it's going to save you waiting around 30, 40, 50 days to actually get the top dollar, then it might actually be worth it. Cash flow is king now. I've spoken about this quite a lot on the channel. There are times here when we should leverage this opportunity. Now, an example of this is let's say you get a bulk deal. Let's say you've got a huge bulk deal and there's certain elements in it which maybe aren't your cup of tea, maybe you're not too familiar with them, or you know someone that will pay a quick in price, more than what you paid for it, and they will give you money instantly. Meaning, let's say you paid $10 a piece, and they're willing to give you $30 a piece. Now, if you were to sell it on eBay and you could get $40 or $50 a piece, it's way better to actually be selling it at that $30 a piece and getting the money instantly the next day. Why? Because you don't have to do any work. And you're probably actually going to be getting just as much profit than if you were selling it on eBay. That's quick leverage, that's quick money, and it's quick profit. Now, from this, it may actually be able to enable cash flow replenishment. So if you've just gone out and spent $1,000 or gone out and spent $500 and you've been able to get a third of that back or half of that back within 24 hours, 
that's going to save you a long period of time of having to replenish that cash flow and any of the profits. It's a win-win. It may also mean you're able to move stock quicker and it may also mean you're able to pay bills or even pay for the deal by making that transaction within the quick turnaround. Again, it's a win-win. So that's just one example, right? And that is an example of that whole scenario. There's many different examples of can we make a profit quickly with sell through rate. The next one is can we make a high profit margin? Now, ideally quick profits and high margins are what we want. We bring those two together and it's happy days. However, sometimes to enable the quick return, we, we do tend to eat up into our margin. So something to consider is your lowest point. If you have your acceptance value, this is going to make things a lot easier. And what I mean by this is if you've purchased an item for $10, you wanna know what is your lowest sell price point. Not just because you need to know your numbers so you know where you're gonna break even or if you're gonna be making 5% margin, 10% margin, 20% margin, 30% margin, whatever it is, whatever it is you like to run your business at. But it means you can just remove any attachment. It might be a $100 item on the market, but you might be willing to get $60 back into your pocket because essentially you've got it for free or you've paid five bucks or you've paid 10 bucks, whatever it may be. So understanding that gives you this ability to flex, meaning it gives you options. It gives you the power to be able to sell the item above anyone else. So in theory, if you know your numbers, it makes it so much easier. And then the third point is the volume of sales to make said profit. If you have profit goals, know what the volume is required, meaning how much do you need to sell in order to make said profit? Because I guarantee you, yes, on paper, it says, oh, yeah, I want to make I want to make $5,000 or $100,000 profit or $60,000 profit. But have you actually ran the numbers on this? And this one, it will surprise you on the actual work required. But also, we need to understand the more sales does not actually necessarily mean more profit. Now, for me, I've been doing a lot of clothing. Now, I'm not making huge, huge profit from these, but I am selling them very, very quickly. And I'm making anywhere between $7 and $10 a piece which can be quite, quite rewarding. However, there's other pieces that I might only be getting a couple of dollars back from those purchases. Again, they're selling very quickly. So I'm able to take maybe one to 10 to 15%, even up to 25% margin on these, but I'm getting it done within 30 days. So you need to be very careful with this because you need to understand the required margins, but also have this aligned with market expectations. So if you start flooding the market and you're undercutting the market and all of a sudden, you know, you're selling $50 items for $10, you're going to screw yourself over because no one's going to ever want to pay $50 again. So you need to be smart with that. But you also need to make sure you're managing what margin you need to hit to ensure that you're not running your business dry in terms of giving it cash or giving it actual money to profit. Number two mindset is the price is right. So when we're considering pricing, there are a few factors we need to take into consideration. There's what people want to pay, the perceived value based on the supply versus demand, what people are willing to pay, perceived value with the lack of supply factor in mind or a higher demand, and then also what people have to pay, meaning there's a lack of supply, therefore the demand remains, and then what people can choose to pay simply because there's a high supply and demand isn't high. So once you understand those, you can start to see where you have opportunity. You can start to see where you're able to actually make a quick buck. So when selling, we need to consider what price is right. Do we sell at market price? Do we sell competitively to our market? Meaning, do we have the luxury to have those options? As I discussed before, can you bring it down? Can you, you know, add free postage? Can you do express postage? Can you do two for one? What is the leverage that you have? Do we have the required margin to actually meet the expectations of what the market is currently demanding in terms of price point. Ideally, we want to set a minimum margin to meet. Ideally, we do this and it gives us the freedom of a range between an average selling price of plus minus 30%. Meaning, if you wanna sell an item for $60, right? You should have the flexibility to be able to bring that down 30% to get it moving very, very quickly. 10% of $60 is $6, 20% is $12, and 30% off is $18. So do you have that flex in your margins to be able to do so? The reason why is people are looking for a cheap opportunity. However, coming back to those points that I said before, if there's scarcity of the item, you don't have to go down all the way down to 30%. However, it might also mean if there's so many other people with 
a good range of you know pricing it means that you have the ability to overpower i'm not saying you should just for the sake of it but it gives you options so as i said meaning with that plus minus 30 percent flex that you're able to bring the price down meaning if supply drops and demand increases we can be in the range that people will be happy to pay the premium and also meaning if the supply increases or the demand remains or lowers we can also lower the price to sell we cover ourselves so what flex what options and what ability do you have to swing in order to continue to make a sale i'll say it again are you pricing to the market meaning are you at or aligned to the market price are you pricing to sell cheap or below market or are you pricing competitively but in line with your margins mindset number three is repeat business remember when i said quick profit can be better well finding creating and building a repeat business partnership or partnerships that enable increased sell through quick cash flow and of course profits is a win-win now i kind of elaborated on this already for example if i can sell a video game console as parts for 30 dollars plus 15 dollars postage on ebay so 45 dollars and let's say i walk away with around 11 dollars profit in my pocket this is all hypothetical Let's assume the cost of goods is $10, fees are like 15%, and other overheads are around $2. That's like $11, $25 profit, right? Now, it may take 30 days or even up to 90 days to actually sell this on eBay. But if you have a relationship with someone, like a partnership, or you have a guy or someone that you know will pay $20 tomorrow, no questions asked, and you don't have to worry about postage, you don't have to worry about any of that work, you will instantly take a profit of $10. The items cost you $10, you're able to drive over to this person, take five items, sell them for $10 each, $50, you've walked away with $20 cash flow per item or $10 profit instantly. Now, you didn't get the $11.25, but was it really worth to get the extra $1.25 simply to you know, get more revenue potentially on eBay? No. Move it quickly, build those relationships where you can enable repeat business. Quicker profits, solo profits, less work and less effort. And the beautiful thing here is that you're helping someone else build their business. You're helping them provide purpose or helping build their purpose and you're helping them make money too. It's a double whammy, a double win for them and a double win for you. The fourth mindset change for me has been consistency. Now, very broad term and I understand that this can be a little wishy-washy, but hear me out. If we price right to sell with a profit, right we've been discussing that we can then enable a quicker cash flow more money to leverage giving us the ability to execute the rinse and repeat approach now this is where things get very very important for instance consistency of the same meaning if we're able to do everything that we've just done replicate it and keep it consistent that's where we're going to make a whole lot of money so like anything good we want more of it so creating consistency inbound to you meaning how you're sourcing but also creating consistency outbound how you actually get the product to your customer pick pack and post is just as important so consistency is what will enable efficiency when done right for instance you may get thousands and thousands of items a month to sort through and to potentially sell but if it's not sorted if it's not checked if it's not managed like with a quality assurance or quality checks then it may not even be worth it constant stock is great constant quality stock is even better so you need to create processes that enables a win for you for example how will you handle dead stock how will you handle low asp stock is it worth your time how will you handle slow moving stock likewise how will you process little volume and high volume of sales with picking packing and posting one really interesting point that you realize the further you grow is let's say at the moment you're doing 10 30 sales a week right you've got a process for that you're able to manage it it's not too bad but if i said to you today someone came through your store and purchased 50 items are you going to be equipped to actually get those 50 items out in the time frame that is required because all of a sudden all of a sudden that is way higher than what you've ever done before and these are the things we need to think about because as we try to scale as we try to grow we all say we want this we want that but there comes an exhaustion or exertion of but there becomes a required effort to manage that scalability meaning you're going to have to put in more effort you're going to have to put in more work to get the higher result you can't expect to do less and get more unless you're paying someone else 
or you have a very, very good process, even then, it's not necessarily going to be quicker, it's just going to be more efficient while doing that volume. So something to really consider on how you're building consistency in your business. Again, I'm being very broad here because there's so many areas that we can do this. But if you can find consistency that works across the business inbound and outbound, it's going to make your life so much better. And you want to be able to do that across all areas to ensure that you do have a well working oiled machine. Mindset number five, customer centric. No, the customer is not always right. However, the customer has the right to make their claim and we want to also try and make sure we're making our customers as happy as possible. There's two types of customers. There's customer number one, which is your, which is your everyday Joe. They can be defensive when something is not as they expected. They will be frustrated when their paid for item or the journey to customer was painful. They too will have bad days, but at the same time, they can be very, very understanding. They're willing to have a conversation. They want to be reassured. They will want a refund because they've made a mistake making a purchase. They will want to cancel an order because they made a mistake. They will have questions to clarify for their comfort. They will make mistakes when making an order, as I said before. They will also sometimes seem silly or really they're just new. They have no understanding or they do not have the experience of buying online. And sometimes they will have their items lost in the mail. Just like us, just like you and me, they too are going to go through the experience of things not working out in their way and they wanting answers and results. It's a scary world out there. They are just like you and me, as I said before, trying to live life, have fun, make and save money. And you got to put yourself in their shoes because I guarantee you, you're probably going to be exactly the same if your item didn't arrive. You're going to be exactly the same if something didn't seem as you had expected or if you had a really bad customer journey experience. You're going to be high on your toes as well. So give them some grace, have a conversation with them. They're human and figure it out. See what you can do. The other customer is the one that has a legit malicious intent. Now, honestly, this is very rare. There's very little of these on eBay or when you're selling online, but there is, there's people out there to scam and there's people out there to steal. So they will play games to try and get free items. They will create drama and they may even try and blackmail for better feedback and things like that. But most of the time you will find it's just the everyday Joe trying to live life. They will make mistakes. They will want their item. They're uneducated. They're unsure of the sales process and they want to live a life just like you and me, just trying to get through life. So remember this, we too make mistakes. You know, have you ever sent something and made a mistake? Have you ever lost an item when trying to sell it? Have you ever, yeah, made a mistake? You're not perfect by all means. However, we need to put that same grace and be humble when dealing with these customers. You too can be defensive. You too can be frustrated and you too can be annoyed. But as we have the intent to sell and make money, we also need to understand that there becomes a level of responsibility to act with integrity and to do the right thing. It's just business. Yes, your items will be lost in the mail. Yes, your customers will want a refund. We can argue with them that it is out of our control and so on and so forth. When your item doesn't arrive, how are you handling it? Are you wanting a refund? Are you wanting a demanding update? Are you wanting more information? It's the same process. We too are human. Like them, we all have our wants, we have our needs, and we have our reassurances or wants of reassurances. So therefore, again, be nice to people, be mindful of people too. And that is the five mindsets that have been key to me in the last few months and over this journey. And it will continue to change. And if you do have any questions about this, because I understand it might've been a lot of information to take in, let's continue the conversation. Chuck a comment down below. We're gonna dive into the April 2023 results, which has been my best month yet again. So here on screen, you can see what has actually happened in terms of profit and loss statement. Now I will call out, this does not include tax and GST, that comes out later, that comes out at the end, and it's a running process because I have to include all my business operations. I have other ways of income other than this business that I run on eBay. So here's the profit and loss. Total revenue being $13,396.43. Cost of goods sold was around $2,726. The gross profit was $10,669. As you can see here, the expenses have been quite interesting. We've got some printing, other costs like refunds and unexpected, post supplies, storage. I haven't had to pay for Storage King this month because when I did the move, I had to pay in advance to lock it in. So it was a bit of a cash flow win for this month. Usually there'd be an extra $500 there. Marketing, a few bucks there. I had to get some more business cards, 
post costs are huge and fees are huge as well. So total expenses for this month was around $6,107 leaving me with an operating profit of around, around $4,562 back into my pocket. Now, in terms of sales and volume and all that jazz, we've done 401 items with around $33 ASP. There is some other interesting things here that I wanna clarify is my KPIs, things that I'm tracking towards. As you can see here on screen, I'm trying to keep my fees lower this financial year, my sell-through rate higher this year, and my expenses lower this year. So this month, my overall fees, this include promos and ads and things like that. And this has not been validated yet. So there is maybe a, a small little adjustment that needs to be made because I haven't received my invoice from eBay. I'm down by about 3.26%. So pretty happy with the average fee and promo totaling out to be about 15.34%. And my sell through rate has actually now hit 41.57% in terms of the amount of items that I've been listing and the amount of items I've been selling. So very grateful for that. And expenses, a little bit higher this month. Eh, it's okay. Time spent in the business this month has been 111 hours. In terms of how I pay myself, I follow the profit first method. And the way this goes about is anytime eBay pays me, lands in my bank, I split it out into owner's pay, profit, OPEX, tax, and boost. There's a book on this. You can go read it. Um, but essentially, I've paid myself out a total of $3,500 into my pocket this uh, month. And profit on top of that was $84, which is like for, you know, a small win to celebrate, buy myself something. The rest has gone back into the business and just continuing to grow the business. Now, again, this won't necessarily be the percentage that would work for you. It works for me based on my lifestyle. So that is April, 2023. Uh, it always scares me when I finish an end of a month because now I have to go do it again and see what I can do. All right, so week 120 has been also a very rewarding week. Here's all the items that have been selling. Uh, books, actually, surprisingly, that was the most profit for this week. As you can see, the profits aren't huge, uh, but books have been really, really well. Clothes, even better in terms of revenue drivers and same with jeans. I did manage to sell some pretty high Lego this week as well. And you can see a few other different bits and bobs, CDs, DVDs, electronics, a whole range of different things here, which have been very, very rewarding. In terms of some of the top items for this week, these aren't all the top items. These are just some of the top items. And the first one being this Lego Republic attack gunship. This was almost complete, about 80%. And uh, minifigs, instructions were there though. Paid $5 for this. It was out of a bulk lot that I got off Facebook Marketplace. And I was able to sell it for $246.65. They had a coupon and walked away with $189.56 after fees and postage, which is just, wow. Top item number two for this week that I wanted to share was this PS3 Guitar Hero 5. Now, this one is a spoiler because it comes out in a video that I'm releasing on Wednesday. I went out with my friend Kevin from Canada and uh, we found this one. I paid on average $8.33 for it. It was actually $10. That's an average cost of good. And I was out of stuff for $223.73 and walked away with $147.81 after fees and postage. And top item number three is this vintage 90s Levi 512 Slim Fit Tapered Leg Jeans. La -di -da -di -da. <laughs> Lots of keywords. So I picked this one up for $14.13, sold it for $101.40. That went international and walked away with $59.58 after fees and postage. And then the final item I wanted to share, this was a quick pickup that I got uh, it was on Wednesday in my recent sourcing video, uh, Steam Locomotives of the Victorian Railways Volume 1. Now, I did say that someone else was selling this for $100. I paid $9.06 for it. I listed it literally for $45 with postage, and they had a coupon. They ended up paying $52.20, sold within a couple of hours, and walked away with $25.37 after fees and postage. Not too bad. And that is the whole mindset thing that I've just been talking about where I had leverage, I had the ability to be able to move it quickly, only one to compare to that hadn't sold, put this up, sold instantly because I had the power to move it. All right, and then in terms of the actual week, how it's actually progressed, well, you can see here, sales have been around 90, margin 43.66%, cost of goods was $624. Uh, I've sold $3,301 worth, profit being $1,441 worth, an ASP of $36.68, average cycle time was around 116 days to sell each item. And there you go, that has been this week. If you are now gonna dive into some show and tell. What's up folks? All right, it is Monday morning. We've got about 47 items going out. Um, big range of different things. One bundle of clothes right here. So we've got, take you through it all. We've got um, Nintendo 64 Killer Instinct. 
We've got a camera, parts not working, a camera case. We've got um, a beer fest, Oktoberfest, sorry, video games. We've got media here. We've even got Simpsons Road Rage manual going out. We've got some mad comics underneath here. Um, just media. We've got some phones over there going out. Some Lego. Um, this one sold this morning. We've got lots of clothes here. We've got an old Mac going out. Uh, that's parts not working. VHS. More VHS. Um, and we've got lots of clothing in here. Jeans, jeans, clothing, clothing. A couple more books here. More books here as well. Uh, some Doctor Who. Some more of the phones. And uh, yes, it's doing pretty good actually. Um, bit of a late start today, so I'm going to get cracking on packing all this up. And um, yeah, it's going to be also public holiday this week as well. So it'll be interesting to see how the week goes, but who knows, each week to its own. Alright team, well let's pack all this up and get out of here. Alright team, we're all done, just packed up everything. As you can see, all stacked up and ready to go. Got to go to the post office of course, just been eating some shapes as well. Good little munch. Um, yeah, I am finding that um, with the increase of sales, I'm spending a lot more time packing. So, I've got to see what I can do about that. And it's not necessarily about pulling the items out, it's getting all this better. So, a few little tweaks that I found with the bubble wrap, um, and a few other little things that I want to try and attempt to do. I've started to not do things in a certain way. For instance, I used to tape this all the time. I'm not taping it anymore. Um, yeah, and because a lot of the clothing, although the clothing when they're in the bags are pretty easy to do, but I am still putting in the business card. So maybe I should just put the business card in when I take the photo, but then the problem is if the item doesn't sell, I have to take the business card out. So yeah, I'm still weighing up a few different things, but small little progress um, over time. It, it's gonna add up. Anyway, appreciate you. I'll see you this day. All right, team, it is Wednesday here, back here getting this stuff done. Now, if you have watched the video from last Wednesday, you've already seen a bit of this, but here it is. Uh, so we've got lots going out today. We've got um, DVDs and media. We've got house series going out. We've got an Anzac badge going out. Uh, Gilmore Girls, that one for 29 or 27. Skylanders uh, for smart TV. Halo um, headset. DS going out. We've got Zeta Zim. We've got lots of clothing here, two jackets. Shirts, jeans, 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 shirts, shirts, North Face. Under here is some Lego and some books as well. Picked these up not that long ago. I got them from, I think it was from the run that I did with Cameron a couple of weeks back. So, sell through rent's pretty good at the moment, guys. Um, I hit $36,000 yesterday, 36000 for 90 days. Back down to, I think it's 35900 at the moment. So, it's a bit of a roller coaster. It changes every time you have to go. Right there, so not too bad. All right, let's pack all this up and um, then I'm going thrifting, so. Beep, beep. All right, team, um, we are all done, all done. All packed up and ready to go. We've got quite a few in here, quite a few in here. Had another sale come through as I was here as well. All right, we're going thrifting. Let's rock and roll. All right, team, it is Friday. We're back here doing all the packages that I didn't get do yesterday because I was out with backpacks. Uh, we've got a few things going out. We've got a whole bunch of Pokemon cards from the live stream. Appreciate you all. Thank you very, very much. Um, we've got some eddings going out, Spider-Man figure. We've got a uh, couple of DVDs here and there, some books, a uh, board game, Mystic uh, Market, I think it's called. A couple of phones, book, Persona 4 on PlayStation 2, R.M. Williams, whole bundle of wrestling, and some more uh, clothing, some jeans, and... Uh, North Face and that. I've actually got a lot of unpaid orders, like seriously, I think I've got seven sitting there at the moment, which is a little frustrating. Um, and there's about probably $400 worth. I don't think they're gonna pay. Um, it's very annoying. It is what it is. All right, Tim, I'm gonna pack all this up, get out of here, and might even do a cheeky little thrift on the way home, but probably really should just go home and list. We'll see. All right, team, we are all done, all packed up. A few things going out here. Um, now I'm going to get out of here. I'll probably swing by a couple of, maybe one shop on the way to post. I've got to pick up something else anyway, so see what we get there. You probably won't see it in this video, but just telling you anyway. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you. If you guys got any questions, usual stuff, any questions, comments, thoughts, chuck them down below. 
um, always happy to try and answer. And you know, some of the things that I just wanted to quickly clarify is I haven't really been documenting much in here, like just doing and you know showing packaging and things like that, simply because I'm just so busy. Like I'm just trying to get on top of things and then get ahead. And I've got big ambitions, and the only way to do that is to continue to grow, continue to put in more work. And um, you know, I'd rather spend the time in the business than rather, you know, documenting and showing things. But if you do have questions about stuff, I will always do my best to try and help people and, and share and, and, you know, explain. Um, but, you know, some of that stuff does take time. So I have to weigh up if I've got the time each week, you know, where I can make that happen for you guys. So I will do my best to always get you the answers that you're looking for. Um, they might not be the right answers in terms of answers that you wanted to hear, but I will do my best and get getting you the, the best answers that I think are the the best answers for your questions if that makes sense all right let's uh let's jump back to me in the uh, future yeah all right team appreciate you being here if you do have any questions comments thoughts anything like that chuck them down in the comments below more than happy to continue the conversation if there is something that you want me to validate or clarify i'll do my best to do so otherwise you have a wonderful day cheers